Snowtracks Television, going strong for 25 years. Snowtracks is sponsored by Skidoo Snowmobiles. Experience that Skidoo feeling. Yamaha, conquer snow. And by FXR Racing, maximum versatility for all conditions. Today, manufacturers are finally starting to understand and accept that a sled with a track longer than 121 inches isn't automatically a crossover. There's a whole category of long track trail sleds, and today we're gonna to shoot out three of the biggest, baddest, and most impressively spec units money can buy. Each of these sleds is the highest spec model from their respective manufacturer. Price will be a consideration in the shootout, but it was not a factor in determining which sleds we chose for the shootout. The most important two requirements are that the sleds must be over 800 cc's and must have a minimum track length of 136 inches. The three sleds we've got on the chopping block today are Arctic Cat's ZR8000RR137, Polaris's Switchback XCR850, and Skidoo's Renegade XRS850. So let's get started by talking about Arctic Cat's ZR8000RR137, and let's start by taking a look under the hood. The heart of the ZR8000RR is Arctic Cat's 800cc C-Tech 2 power plant. This engine is semi-direct injected and makes fantastic power all through the power band. We love its mid-range and its top-end pull, and overall, we have very little bad to say about this motor at all. Chassis-wise, the 8000RR is based on Arctic Cat's Pro Cross platform and rides on the Arctic race front suspension that produces 10 inches of travel and Arctic Cat's slide action rear suspension that produces 13.5 inches of travel. Kashima-coated Fox Zero QS3R shocks are standard up front and on the rear arm, and a Zero QS3 handles the front arm. For 2019, the 8000 RR gets a long list of new features and upgrades, including the new next-gen body panels, three-wheel rear axle, new switch gear with push-button start and digital heater controls, as well as new grips and the all-new stealth lightweight brake master cylinder. The RR package also includes handguards, a tether, awesome-looking LED accent lighting, a tunnel bag, and a mid-height race windshield. Traction is handled by a 137 by 1.25 lug Ripsaw 2 track that provides excellent on-trail traction in pretty much any snow condition. Next, let's take a look at Polaris's XCR Switchback 850, and again, let's start under the hood. Obviously, this XCR is not the same as last year's XCR in one very important way, power. Under the hood of the 2019 model, you're gonna find Polaris's new Patriot 850. It has gobs of power down low, in the mid-range, and up top. It sounds amazing, feels so strong, and it just has tons of character. The XCR rolls on Polaris's Axis platform with the Axis front end delivering 9.3 inches of travel and the Pro XCR rear end delivering 13.6 inches of travel. Walker Evans Speed Comp piggyback needle shocks handle the front end and the rear arm, and a non-needle version of the Speed Comp handles the front arm. The XCR package is a pretty serious one that comes standard with Polaris's race technology vented brake system, chromoly rear pivot, solid jack shaft, chromoly front torque arm, reinforced rail beams, solid wheels in the skid frame, and a performance seat. Polaris's interactive digital display with GPS mapping and a taller mid-height windshield that actually keeps you warm are both standard. The XCR switchback can be ordered with either a 136 by 1.35 Cobra or 136 by 1.75 backcountry track depending on where you plan to use it. Next up is Skidoo's Renegade XRS 850. Skidoo was first to market with an 850 power plant and until this year, they were the only manufacturer with a displacement advantage. This year, the Renegade XRS remains largely unchanged, including under the hood, which is a good thing because power from Skidoo's 850 is strong everywhere, and one of the hallmarks of the 850 power plant is fuel and oil efficiency. The Renegade XRS is based on Skidoo's Gen 4 platform, with their RAS3 front end producing 10 inches of travel, and legendary R-Motion producing 10 inches of travel out back. 
KYB takes care of the damping duties with a set of piggyback Pro 36s up front and a massive set of remote reservoir Pro 40s out back. Skidoo's XRS package includes some interesting features, including a more forward-mounted steering post, flatter, wider, and stronger RS running boards, adjustable handlebar riser block and race seat, but instead of a windshield, a deflector thing and handguards are standard, and honestly, they don't do a very good job of keeping you warm. The revolutionary P-Drive primary is also standard, and a set of race-level Brembo brakes round out the XRS package. Traction for the XRS Renegade is handled by either a 137x1.25 Ripsaw or Ice Ripper XT, or a 137x1.6 Ice Cobra, giving you lots of options to match your track to your riding style. So now we know what we're dealing with, but obviously the question we have now to answer is which of these three top of the line, big bore, two stroke, long track trail sleds is actually the best. To determine this, we need to look at a few different categories of comparison. They are front and rear ride quality, handling, power and power delivery, ergonomics, features, and value. Let's start off with front ride quality. Front end ride quality is an area where these three sleds differ greatly. The Polaris Axis front end is, as it always has been, the best riding front end in the business, which obviously gives it the win here. Arctic race front suspension can handle mellow trail rides or hard ditch banging without flinching, and it comes in second with Skidoo's RAS3 coming in a close third. This gives three points to the Polaris, two to the Arctic Cat, and one to the Skidoo. Out back, the story is different though. Our motion is hands down the best rear suspension of the bunch. The Pro Ride rear end of the Axis comes second with the slide action skid frame of the Arctic Cat coming in a close third again. Handling is a very subjective thing. What might be great for one person may not be great at all for another. So to pick a winner here, we tallied up the opinions of our entire crew as well as our long list of test riders. Here are the results. The winner is, by a large margin, the XCR. Most people agree its handling is the most predictable and confidence inspiring. The difference between second and third place was surprisingly close. The Arctic Cat and Skidoo are very much opposites. The XRS is more precise on the initial turn in, but it feels a little nervous at speed. The RR is a little less precise on an initial turn-in, but bites predictably and at speed is more confidence-inspiring. Power and power delivery is definitely the category people are interested in most now that the 850 E-Tech has some serious competition. Right off the bat, though, it shouldn't come as a surprise that Arctic Cat's C-Tech 2800 comes in third here with one point. The power and efficiency of Skidoo's E-Tech 850 is undeniable. The P-Drive primary is outstanding and its benefits cannot be overstated. However, engagement is on the abrupt side and something needs to be done about vibration, especially at idle. On the other hand, the 850 Patriot is smooth as butter and engagement is almost anticlimactic with how soft and controllable it is. Feels like it outpulls the E-Tech from bottom end to top end. It's not as efficient as the Skidoo, though not terrible, and at the end of the day, it simply outperforms the E-Tech. Ergonomics are again very subjective, so we went back to our large group of testers and pulled them to see which they preferred. Polaris Axis chassis is the most comfortable of them all, with near-perfect riding position. In second place was Skidoo's Rev Gen 4, which most testers agreed is comfortable but leaves you feeling more like you're riding on the sled instead of becoming part of the sled. A very close third was Arctic Cat's Pro Cross chassis, which is an extremely comfortable sled, but a low seat height hurts its overall ergonomic scores. Most of our testers agreed, though, that if it had a taller seat, it would actually be more comfortable than the Gen 4. When it comes to features, all three of these sleds have expert level shock packages. They all have race inspired extras as well. In the end, this was one of the closest categories, but in this case, the XRS wins by a hair thanks to its included electric start, excellent running boards, bomb proof shock package and adjustable bar riser. A very close second was Polaris's XCR with its excellent vented brakes, race ready suspension upgrades, GPS enabled gauge and functional windshield. But an even closer third was Arctic Cat's ZR with its Kashima coated QS3 shocks, tunnel bag, standard equipment, functional windshield, and cool LED accent lighting. The final category in this shootout is value, but this doesn't just mean the cheapest price. The sled with the lowest price tag doesn't necessarily offer the most value. What's important here is what you're getting for your money and the cost versus experience factor. Polaris's Switchback XCR850 retails for $14,199 US. Arctic Cat's ZR8000RR137 retails for $14,599, and Skidoo's Renegade XRS850 retails for $15,49.
When you consider all that you're getting with the switchback, the performance, handling, ergonomics, then factor in the included four-year engine warranty and the fact that it's $400 cheaper than the Arctic Cat and $850 cheaper than the Skidoo, it's impossible not to pick this sled as the value winner. Yes, the Skidoo is the most expensive of the bunch, but you're getting the best rear end ride in the business, impeccable fit and finish, and the highest tech fuel injected system in the industry, plus a more powerful 850 E-Tech. This isn't to say the 8000 RR isn't a great deal. It definitely is, and if it had an 850 under the hood, it might very well have taken second place. Our seven categories of competition give us a final tally of 19 points for the Switchback XCR 850, 14 points for the Renegade XRS 850, and nine points for the ZR8000 RR137. These three sleds are so close in every category. We're splitting hairs here to pick a winner. The sleds in second and third place are definitely not bad sleds. But in the case of this shootout, we feel the Polaris Switchback XCR 850 is simply a tiny bit better. But at the end of the day, we would be stoked to ride any one of these sleds anytime, any place. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Welcome back to the Trail Tech shop. I know what you're thinking. Did I forget that it's winter and not summer for dirt tracks? I know it's a little strange seeing an ATV in the Trail Tech shop this time of year, but stick with me and I'll show you how all of this is gonna make a whole lot more sense. In the final episode of Dirt Tracks this past season, I installed a Kimpex Click and Go To plow kit with all the trimmings. And during that install, I added the extra long push frame extension to push that plow way out front and make room for a set of tracks, which my friends at Can-Am were more than happy to send over to us to test. I figured what better way to put your ATV to work and still allow you to get out and play on it. Plus, I love this kind of stuff. Track kits on ATVs make them look like little tanks, and the truth is, they kind of are. There's few things in the winter months that are gonna stop a track kit at ATV, but this track kit in particular is a whole different animal. This track kit is a Can-Am Apache Backcountry Track Kit, the gnarliest, most aggressive looking kit on the market that offers industry leading flotation and incredible trench digging, deep snow traversing, off trail powder fun. Sporting a two inch lug, yeah, that's two inches. It's in mountain sled territory. This kit will plow through powder nearly as well as a mountain sled too. All track kits are not created equal, and one of the hallmarks of a Can-Am track kit are the engineering hours that have gone into them. And I'm not just talking about the track frame or mounting kit, although those are very important. Can-Am engineers look at everything right down to the power steering and offer a special track kit plug and play module that corrects speedometer readouts and also optimizes the amount of power output the DPS offers. This makes steering easier and also safer for the ATV and track kit. Can-Am requires this module for the install of their systems as it's essential to getting the best performance possible from the tracks. Seeing as this isn't a four season track kit, I thought before I go out and run through the powder, I'll do some work with it. So I'm gonna hook up the Kimpex Click and Go 2 plow system and see how it handles a task like pushing snow. Traction is no issue here as the backcountry tracks push our Kimpex plow with ease. In fact, it pushes it so well that we have to stop ourselves from plowing clean over the banks because these tracks will keep on going. When you get the job done and you're looking to play, it's time to drop the click and go to plow and take this Apache kit to somewhere that it's a little more at home. With an added seven inches of ground clearance, this is a monstrous ATV. I mean, there are a few things that this won't go through, over, or around. And while we don't yet have feet of powder, we do have exceptionally technical powder fields that are nothing but reeds and thick swamp grass below the crispy snow an area that we've been able to get a track kit at ATV stuck in the past, but this time I think these aggressive two inch paddles will have no issue carrying us through. Another huge improvement over the Apache 360 LT track kit is the 23% larger contact patch of the backcountry. This means that you have the footprint of nearly an extra track over the 360. With the power steering module installed in our Outlander XTP, I have to say this is the easiest track kitted ATV to ride that I've ever experienced. And it's truly a feature that I haven't seen elsewhere. 
This would be like mountain riding in deep powder with a 165 compared to a 154. The extra flotation is huge and allows the backcountry tracks to get on top of the snow, spreading out the load and carrying me much easier across the terrain. We've tested a lot of track kits over the years, and I'd have to say that by far, the Can-Am Apache backcountry is the best in the deep snow. It's the most fun, designed to take you further and deeper than the rest, and I'd have to say it does all of that and a whole lot more. Closed captioning of snow tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers, built for adventure. I don't know about you, but it seems to me today everything is about the reboot, going back to something good from the past and redoing it in a more modern way. Obviously, movies and TV shows are top of the list, but this trend extends well beyond the entertainment industry. Everything from camper trailers to food mixers and blenders are taking on a vintage vibe, and it's working. It's no surprise that as you get older, you tend to become a little bit more nostalgic. Going back and thinking about the good old days when you were younger, cooler, and faster than you are today. So why wouldn't a product that helps you go back and relive those times be appealing? The snowmobile industry has seen this trend over the past decade as well. What once was great has become great again with the rebirth of the XCR and the Indy from Polaris, the LT Grey and the Thundercat from Arctic Cat, the TNT and the Blizzard from Skidoo, and most recently, the Snow Scoot from Yamaha. But Yamaha wasn't satisfied with just rebirthing the Snow Scoot. They had something much bigger in mind. There are only a handful of sleds that have come and gone over the years that carry a legacy as strong as Yamaha's SRX 700 Triple Triple. This sled was famous for being way faster than it should be and routinely putting down sleds with more displacement. But as fast as it was, it did have quite the list of drawbacks. Most notably would be poor ride quality and almost non-existent handling. So yes, while the SRX does have an incredibly strong legacy, that fame also brings with it some notoriety. Snowmobiles have advanced light years beyond their 15-year-old counterparts. Everything from suspension to ergonomics and performance and economy has changed drastically. And so too is Yamaha's SRX. This new rebooted version brings with it all of the speed and performance of its namesake, but adds all the modern advancements in ride and handling we've come to expect. So what is an SRX besides just a name and a retro look? Well, it starts out as a Sidewinder with Yamaha's SRV front end and 137-inch DualShock SR skid frame out back. A set of three Fox IQS remote adjustable shocks comes standard on the front end and the rear track shock with a regular QS3 on the front arm. But this is where things take a bit of a non-traditional turn. Because the SRX is aimed directly at high-speed lake running, the whole suspension system has been lowered. Now don't worry, this drop in ride height was achieved by the use of dual rate springs instead of shortened shocks. So while the sled does sit lower on the snow, it still has the same 10 inches of front and 13.5 inches of rear end travel. The dual rate springs are initially softer but have the same end force, which is what allows the sled to sit lower while still maintaining a plush ride and the anti-bottoming characteristics we've come to expect from this chassis. Fox IQS technology is as important as their manually adjusted QS3 counterparts were a few seasons ago. A handlebar mounted toggle switch is pressed straight in to activate the IQS portion of the left side of the gauge cluster. It can then be rocked left or right to select the three modes of compression damping available. No, it's not an intelligent system that does the thinking for you. But if you stop and really think about how often you actually adjust even your current QS3 shocks, you'll likely see, as we did, but it's really not that often. With IQS though, you can and will definitely adjust your shocks dozens, if not more times per day. It's a system that works as promised and is more useful than you can ever imagine. So what else sets the SRX apart from a standard Sidewinder and makes it the standout lake racer it's been designed to be? Well, any high-speed junkie knows one of the key factors in going fast is your track. And this is something Yamaha had to take a serious look at. A fast track is one with lower lug heights, but with 180 plus horsepower on tap, Yamaha couldn't afford to sacrifice too much traction in its quest for big numbers. So they settled on a one inch lug Ripsaw Series 1 track that is fully clipped. Also, the decision was made to only offer the SRX in a 137 inch track length. This gave the best compromise between high speed and traction, 
and I can say confidently that it definitely does work really well. On top of the track, a new rear axle design with 8-inch idler wheels helps lower rolling resistance even further. The SRX gets all of the other new updates you'll find on other Sidewinder models, including all new handlebar switch gear and the new Hayes Master Cylinder and Shorty Brake Lever. But at the end of the day, the question on everybody's minds is an important one. Is this new SRX reboot an overachiever like the old one was? Is it enough to put the boots to anybody you're going to come across on the lake? And the answer is yep. This sled is a missile, equally as powerful as any other Sidewinder with a few tweaks to help you achieve the tallest top speed numbers you can possibly get out of a stock sled. But the real beauty of this SRX is that it's not simply a one-trick pony. This sled definitely rocks on the lake, but it's also comfortable to ride and easy to handle on the trails. It's everything the old SRX was and everything the old SRX wasn't. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris Snowmobiles, MBRP Power Sports, race inspired, trail proven, and by the wide world of Arctic Hat. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, like it and then subscribe to our page for more great content from Snowtracks TV.